What inspires best-selling author Catherine McKenzie? Today on All About Canadian Books, we're going to find out. But before we do, for the latest author interviews and behind the book stories, please hit that subscribe button on the bottom of your screen. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome back. I am so excited to have author Catherine McKenzie as a guest. Catherine was born and raised in Montreal. She was a lawyer for 20 years and now she writes full time. And when Catherine's not writing, she's an avid runner, skier and tennis player. Today, we'll be talking about Catherine's latest novel, Six Weeks to Live. And it was published by Simon & Schuster. And here's a little taste of what Six Weeks to Live is about. Jennifer Barnes never expected the shocking news she received at a routine doctor's appointment. She has a terminal brain tumor and only six weeks to live. While stunned by the diagnosis, the 48-year-old mother decides to spend what little time she has left with her family, adult triplets and twin grandsons. But when she realizes she was possibly poisoned a year earlier, she's determined to discover who might have tried to get rid of her before she's gone. You have to read <laughs> to find out. And oh my gosh, what an ending, Catherine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so welcome to All About Canadian Books. Thank you for having me. We're having a very Canadian day. It's snowing in the middle of April. So, I, oh, I know. I came, I put a wet sweater on this morning. <laughs> so, um, Catherine, you are an avid runner, trail or road? Uh, more road. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And will you be running later on today in the snow? I uh, know, not in the snow. I'm not that crazy. Maybe I'll get on my treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't blame you. Indoor activity, indoor activity. Now, Catherine, you have written 11 novels. Um, typically, what, ins what inspires you? I mean, usually I'm just struck with an idea that kind of won't leave me alone. So I'll get a, I'll get a concept for a book and, and then I'll think about it. And if it stays with me, um, and I can see the end of the book and I can think of the twists and, and the main characters, then I know that's something that I'm interested in writing. And then usually kind of the voice of the main character shows up. So the first line of the book um, and, and then I start writing. And then away you go. Then away I go. <laughs> away you go. Now you're six weeks to live. Like I love this whole I concept of you know what would you do if you had to solve your own murder? Right. How did you come up with this concept? <laughs> like, what's the inspiration? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, a little bit of tragedy. Somebody in my extended family got a very sudden final diagnosis with a, a time frame. And it was interesting to me, you know, to watch how she handled it um, and the choices that she made. And, and I think, you know, it, we would all start thinking about well, what would we do in that circumstance? Like one of the things that was really important to her was to go through her jewelry and make sure that people she cared about got it, but got it directly from her. And, and it, it's, it's interesting to me because I don't really care about things. So I'm like, I would be on the beach, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, okay. Um, and, and then at some point, I think I just started thinking about it from um, a book premise idea. And because I write suspense books, mm -hmm. um, this idea of, because, you know, partly when you get that very sudden diagnosis, it's like, how did the doctors miss this? You know, like, it's yeah. like how does that even happen? Um, and so, and not, nothing nefarious happened to, to, to this person, <laughs> but, um, but it did just get me, my brain thinking at one point. And, and I was also a big fan of the movie DOA um, that was remade in the 80s. And I watched it a bunch of times when I was a teenager. And but the originals from the late 50s. And that's a movie where a man arrives at a police station and says, I'd like to report a murder. And they're like, Who do, who's murdered? And he says, me. Oh. Um, <laughs> and that, that movie takes place over 48 hours. Um, and... Um, so I, I think it was really a combination of, of those ideas in, in this case that, that gave me that gave me this idea. 
Now, I really loved as well, I mean, talk about a dysfunctional family, like the relationships <laughs> within this family are very intriguing. You know, we have right. a very contentious dis- a divorce, right? You've got the, the three daughters, um, their mother. And I was curious, um, Catherine, when you were developing these, these women in particular, what was really important to you when you were developing their character and also their relationships? Well, I think um, if, if we talk about the triplets, um, I, I know someone who has very young and nothing like these these girls, but who has triplets where they're identical, there's identical twins and then one fraternal, which is like mm-hmm. the triplets in my book. Yeah. And I honestly, ever since I heard that, I've just been fascinated with that possibility because you know, two people are like people, they're twins, but they're not twins, they're triplets. And what happens to the other one? And if they don't look alike and, and, you know, do they feel left out? And, and again, I think that as a writer, when we encounter use unusual situations, at least this writer starts thinking about like what it must be like to be in that situation. And um, so I always think it's, it's good to import those kinds of things into books, not, not to base them on people I know, but, mm-hmm. but if they have me asking questions, then I think it, it allows, you know, to explore in, in, a, in a sense of depth. Um, I think also, you know, being in my now later 40s, like we all know people who've been divorced. And um, I think that, you know, one of the really interesting thing happen- that happens in divorce is this bizarre societal pressure that gets put on people, particularly if they have kids, to get along with their ex, despite how evil or terrible their ex might be. Yeah. And I just find that completely bizarre. Like if, mm. if you didn't have kids, if somebody cheated on you to take an example, you'd never talk to them again. And no one would be like, well, why aren't you hanging out with this guy? <laughs> but somehow because of, I don't know, movies or whatever, <laughs> now you're all expected to have Christmas together and be, you're supposed to be the bigger person. And, and I, I, I like when society has like decided Mm-hmm. about something one thing I like turning that on his head and being like you know what no it's okay that this woman still hates this man who yes you know who who cheated on her and treated her like garbage like that's okay mm-hmm. and I I want to show you know I think the world is a lot grayer than people like and I mm-hmm. think I think it it, it 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 gives richness to my stories to mm-hmm. show people who are in situations where um you know, like it's okay to be mad. <laughs> like, it's okay yeah. to have, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and I think it's it's more realistic. Like families do get, you know, it's not some Pollyanna like, oh, it's fine. Mommy and daddy don't love each other anymore. So we're all gonna like get along and have joint yeah. Christmases and whatever. You know, I, I don't really think that happens. And certainly when I was growing up, nobody expected it to happen. Yeah. But maybe it's because of like celebrity uncouplings or whatever. Gwyneth, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I I know. Everyone likes to blame everything on Gwyneth. I don't think it's exclusively (laughs) Gwyneth's fault, but I do think that there is this culture that's probably fueled by celebrities Mm -hmm. of, of, you know, uh, like the good divorce, you know? And um, I think like when you're in that kind of situation, it's, like whatever you need to do to survive. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't think you need the judgment of the world being like, well, I wouldn't be like that. It's like, well, very easy for you to say. <laughs> you know? yeah. So I have no strong opinion about this, obviously. I'm not divorced, but <laughs> you know, I reserve the right if I get divorced to never speak to my ex again. And I'm going to be fine with that. <laughs> and and as a reader, Catherine, that's what I really appreciated was the honesty of the way all of these women felt in their relationships. I thought that was really, really great. Um, at any point, did you think of adding a brother to that to that sibling <laughs> mix there? I mean, I definitely at one point was like, I got a lot of women in this book, but <laughs> which, yeah, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I, I think it's fine. I like, I, I didn't, I don't believe in adding male or female characters just because it needs to be more balanced. I think in the end, um, I wanted it to be three sisters and another kid just kind of would have been excessive. And, and I had written a book called I'll Never Tell, which was about a family of five children. And, um, you know, at some point you have to like rein in the number of narrators uh, (laughs) to a manageable level. So 
um, yeah, you know, like this is a, a bunch of women's stories and each of the women are, are really different, I think. And yes. some of them have chosen, you know, more traditional paths. Others are like, I'm never having kids. Um, and I, I think that's okay too. I like showing that diversity and, um, you know, what feminism has always meant to me and somehow feminism became a bad word. I, I blame the millennials. I don't know why, but um, like, it just is about choices to me. Yeah. Um, and, and not about judging one another's choices, but, but for women to actually have real choices about what they want to do with their lives. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's okay to regret, may, have regrets too, right? Like to be, you know, oh, maybe I should have done this other thing, or maybe I will go back to school when I'm in my 40s. So, yeah. so of, of your, of your female characters, were, did you feel closer to anyone over the others? Yeah, I get to ask that a lot. I mean, I yes and no, because each because the book is narrated by the, by all four of them. I yes. have to stand in their shoes, so I always have to understand their motivations and their reasonings, regardless of, the, of whether those are the choices that I would make in the same circumstance. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't normally really develop favorites, to be honest. I I think yeah. I admire, um, you know, one of the twins. Um, her name's Aileen and, and she's yes. very much like she's kind of I don't know if I can swear but she doesn't give an f about <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, anything you know and I mean obviously that's not true she does care but she mm -hmm. keeps it close to the vest and and I do I do kind of admire people who can go through the world like that like mm -hmm. you know um and I think we'd all be better for it in a way if we cared a little less what people thought of us um yeah. and we we thought a little more about what we wanted yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I, 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 I like all of them. I understand all of them. Um, I think they're all struggling mm -hmm. and hopefully I made that struggle realistic and relatable. Yeah. Yeah. No, you, you did. And I'd have to say, like, I, I did say earlier, like, oh my gosh, I did not see that ending coming at <laughs> all. Like at all. Good. Good. <laughs> was, was that, I don't, I won't give anything away, but was, no. was your ending, was that always going to be the ending or did it change as you started developing your characters along the way? No, it's, that was always the ending. Um, yeah. You know, when you write a book like this, a mystery, a thriller or whatever, yeah. at least for me, I always need to know who did it and yes. why they did it before yeah. I start writing, because what I want to be is fair to the reader. And so if you went back and I'm not saying you have to reread my book, but if you did, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, there'd be sentences or phrases yes. where you're like, oh, I read this one way, but now that I know who yeah. did it, yeah. I'm reading it this way. So yeah. um, in order to do those and not completely rewrite your book, yeah. you know, you kind of have to know where it's yeah. going from the beginning. Yeah. So yeah, that was always my plan. Um, yeah, I always know the end point that I'm driving to. Mm -hmm. Occasionally it's changed slightly. You know, I might yeah. add an epilogue or I might add an extra chapter or mm -hmm. or whatever, but but I don't think I've ever changed who it was. Right. right. Um in any time that I've written this yeah. kind of book. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Catherine, what are you currently working on? Um, I just turned in my book for next year, which is called Please please join us. Mm -hmm. And it's about a woman who gets invited to a women's networking group that turns sinister. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Mm -hmm. So we'll Good. have, I mean, six weeks to live is just coming out. Just like so, it came out yesterday. Yeah. yeah so I mean, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. pretty fresh and you're already done the next one. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, yeah, when you publish a book a year, that is kind of a weird time zone that you get into which is that yep. by the time a book has come out you've already written the next one and you might even be working on the one after that you know so yeah. sometimes I literally yesterday I was talking about the triplets and I'm like what's the third one's name again <laughs> I was having <laughs> yeah. a brain freeze on my own yeah. character's names which is terrible and and it definitely happens I when I do book clubs for older books I like oh yeah, yeah good point I think that happened <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to crash study before it. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, well, Catherine, a big thank you for being such a great guest on All About Canadian Books today. 
I will put links down below in the description box so our viewers can learn more about you and also to purchase a copy of Six Weeks to Live, which was a fantastic read. And I can't say it enough. I did not see the end coming. And I love that as a reader. Love it. So thank you so much, Catherine. Oh, thanks for having me. My pleasure.